all the all the parts that you ex expect to be the most difficult, I think, were <clears throat> were the hardest for me. Um, all, all of the all the big beats, the big moments that everyone's waiting for, except for the wedding, was kind of um, it was it was difficult to. Uh, it was difficult to handle the weight of it for so long because we didn't shoot it until the very end. But once it came, it was so easy. It just, it just happened, and um, yeah, all the all the all the all the rest of the parts were were um, like sort of found. Not, I mean, it found naturally, but like in an incredibly intense setting and kind of hard to remember. So I'm not sure specifically which one, to be honest. Kind of, it's it's funny. You get different things out of it because uh, you can kind of. You can you can green light a movie sort of, but um, in a very very specific way because I have a very extremely specific audience, um, and so you, you've always got to be, you know, if you, if you want to do big budget movies, you've always got to be aware that like a studio is going to want you to try and bring in the Twilight audience, and that's why they're hiring you. Um, but at the same time, you've got to do something different. Otherwise, everybody else is going to go crazy. I mean, you get you, you get one thing and it's and it's replaced. You know, when when one door opens, another one closes all the time. So, it's a uh, it's a strange. You're kind of in the same position as you were. <laughs> I'm in the same position as I was before, really. Don't look at the. Um, I don't know. I think. I think it's. I get asked all the time how I could get behind playing a character that is so sort of submissive and uh, like the sacrificial lamb. I think it is the most valiant thing to be able to give yourself to someone and he gives himself to her equally. I don't know why everyone likes to focus on on her. It almost says something about the people that's, that have that opinion. Um, but I think that the fact that they're so, I don't know, just die hard invested. It just, it's kind of, it's nice. It's, also, it's rare. I think, uh, I think it's cool. I don't know. I know. I wanted, honestly, like, it really did feel like. I wanted Bill, the director, to come put his hand in. I wanted all four direct. You know what I mean? It's right, sort of right, like, exactly. I wanted everyone to put a little pinky in. Because I look so genuinely. Almost like swellingly proud of everyone. I mean, so yeah, it's pretty. It's, it's pretty. No, and, like and for that. Stephanie to like op to, to have opened it. That's true. That's true. She, she spoke. So to bring everybody in. It was so cool. Yeah, yeah that'd be cool. Awesome. I mean, maybe. I mean, uh, I'm a big fan of Kristen, and I was beforehand. So maybe. Bella's absolutely certain that she wants to spend forever with Edward, but there's just something about marriage that she's apprehensive about, and. It, it comes from the way she was brought up, and also just uh, there are a few there are a few beats right before the wedding actually occurs that 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 really send her into the anxiety that she brings into the ceremony when she first starts walking down the aisle. There are a few looks from Edward that are just kind of unclear to her. Yeah, it was the. I mean, no one really knew like how to. We were just inventing stuff. The the wire the wire which we used for to to run for us is a is a set up for a camera um, to film like cars and stuff, and we were just like oh just put the guy in it just like hang him off it, um, and so it, no one really knew if it would work and it was kind of all these things where the wire would bounce because it's, you're move you're pretending to run and so it would get all the balance off, um, and so you had to like be have complete center of gravity you'd have to be so still but also moving and then try and make it not look like robotic and like it's impossible <laughs> I'm not sure honestly this has become like a big story I'm not I don't know if he was a real I was in such a zone that day I think it might be a story that Rob finds funny that he made up <laughs> but I also could be wrong about that no not really because you can't really control what the oven's going to do that much I mean especially with stuff like that I mean for basic commands, she'll get it right every single time. But for kind of nuanced things, I mean, that seems really sort of improvised. I mean, you, no. you just kind of had to, whatever she felt like doing, you just had to go with it. <laughs> um, I don't know, it feels very complete to me. So I, I, I don't want to go back. Nothing nothing weighs on my head. You know, I, I, I don't think, gosh, I want to go back and redo this. Or probably Edwin and Bella's relationship is always very... Uh, 
it's always so fraught. There's always so much tension in it all the time. And then on the honeymoon, it's just, they're just having fun together. And that was the first time me and Kristen could really do that in, uh, in the whole series. So that was kind of nice. That's right. I know, it's funny, they're always sort of, in the, in the previous ones, they're always doing very adult things, and it does feel a little bit like, God, you guys, just relax, go to prom. And, <laughs> and in this one, um, yeah, they definitely are dealing with some heavy, heavy stuff. Yeah, they... Oh, yeah, yeah, I, got, I do loads of dumb stuff, it never works ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, it, it was so weird, it's like a very typical LA story. Um, I was doing a school play, a very embarrassing Christmas school play, and, uh, and I was asked to go on auditions, and I was just very arbitrarily like, sure, yeah. What was your role? Uh, yeah, what well, you're saying it like, you're saying it doesn't look like it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Bella wants to keep, obviously have, have the baby, and, um, and Edward's just terrified of it and, and thinks that it's going to destroy her and thinks that she's ridiculous for thinking that she's strong enough to, to have a vampire baby because he thinks it's just like, you know, Satan's spawn because that's how he feels about himself. Yeah, no, it, I, I hadn't heard of it when I went into it, and I didn't really know about it the whole time I was shooting. And then when we came back to L.A. to do reshoots, uh, suddenly 200 fans were at the, uh, at, the, at, the, at the set. And we were just like, what? And everyone who was involved with it was like, what is going on? Like, why, like, why is, where did this start? And then literally from the day, that day forth, when we went back to L.A., people came up to you the whole time in the street, and, it's like, how do you know? And, and it literally changed. It used to be from Harry Potter. And suddenly one day they're just like, is Edward Cullen? It's a really strange experience. Except uh, now you. Yeah, absolutely. I feel, um, <clears throat> I, I'm not happy to be done <laughs> because, uh, because of how long it was. I think it was kind of such a unique indulgent experience as an actor that you really I mean I'm prob probably never gonna get again because I, I could I really can never do like TV I can never I'm such a control freak I need to know everything I need to know what I'm signing on to but um <clears throat> I I'm so proud of everyone and I really I'm, I'm I, I don't I, I love thinking about it you know I love I, it's not going anywhere and um, I'm sure I'm gonna have to talk about it for the rest of my life anyway so it's good that it's good that I feel that way uh, I speak a tiny amount of French, uh, a tiny amount of Afrikaans, and a tiny amount of, a tiny, tiny amount of Polish, <laughs> like, like five sentences. <laughs> Can I add it? Deer Hunter is the best wedding scene in, that's ever been, I, it's incredible, definitely. I like that. It was so strange to shoot it, like, uh, I have no idea what it's going to look like. Uh, it was just kind of... It was sort of hilarious when we were shooting it, and but also it has the potential to be really frightening. Um, I, I did a movie called The Safety of Objects, which was a sort of dark, uh, independent movie. Um, and then the first big commercial thing that I did was called Panic Room. Oh yeah, Panic Room. Uh, it's your it's not really. I mean, you just, you just kind of, uh, it just sort of happens. I mean, it's always such a stress as well. I mean, I, every single time I'm only five minutes to get here and stuff. You never know what's going on. Casey, you'll see. Considering how much pressure and weight has been put on this dress, um, <laughs> it, it was really scary right up until it fit perfectly. I mean, I, I loved the whole cons. I was like, it's, it's beautiful, I love it. It just, you know, once, once, once I see it on my body, the way it's supposed to, because literally, the, the, I think the day, the day we did a close-up uh, before the dress was ready, um, when it's just me and Charlie before I walk out, it didn't, it didn't fit me at all, and I was like, oh man, this is just going to be another one of those things that slips away from you, and you just look like want to, you know, die afterwards, but it was, I, I love it, I think it's, I think it's beautiful. Yeah, as long as, I mean, I wouldn't mind doing like something if people called it a series. I hate it when people call things a franchise. <laughs> franchise is for like a Burger King, <laughs> like a film is a series. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, as soon as studios start calling it the franchise, you know, I don't know if I could do that again. Bella's absolutely certain that she wants to spend forever with Edward, but there's just something about marriage that she's apprehensive about, and it, it comes from the way she was brought up, and also just uh, there are a few there are a few beats right before the wedding actually occurs that 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 really send her into the anxiety that she brings into the ceremony when she first starts walking down the aisle. There are a few looks from Edward that are just 
kind of unclear to her. The best way brooding face, yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think everybody has some some kind of toy. I mean, I, I, I don't, I've never met someone who, who has absolutely no conflict within themselves. And you just have to keep emphasizing it, just keep picking at it, and then eventually, uh, you know, it's quite. An, it was a nice character to explore that type of that type of uh, part of your brain. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine. Um, <clears throat> yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it, it's not easy to. Um, it's not easy to talk about sort of stuff that. Literally, the things that make you. That, that make you who you are like the thing like this is kind of the most important not just this but you know my job it's it's so wrapped up for an actor it's so wrapped up in who you are and your life most people's jobs aren't wrapped up in that I mean um, so to then like like contend with talking to like uh, the world rather than just you yeah so it's it's absolutely but at the same time it's kind of a great opportunity to, to um, like answer like questions for yourself, you know what I mean? Like typically, I would never be talking about this, and so um, that part of it's pretty cool, to be honest. Chag Samer. Yeah, is that exactly. Chag Samer. Chag. Chag Samer. Good. Yes. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Thank you so much. Cool. Thanks a lot. Um, I liked me a bit of Pink Ranger, to be honest. Uh, that's way back though. Let me see. Um, God, I think honestly, like. Pfft, this is really up. Natalie, not Natalie Portman. I watched The Professional when I was like 11 and just sort of went like, please, get out of here. I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, so she's, um, I probably for her. I hope the, the vampire sex. <laughs> like, I mean, because that was also a very strange scene to film, but it looked kind of cool. That, that the, human, the human sex scene in this one was just kind of like awkward to shoot. But the vampire thing, when we're both supposed to be like really good, uh, like it's that there were some really cool moments in it. So hopefully it'll be good. Yeah, I mean I read it having already had the part, so from such a different perspective. It's about a very normal, very stable girl who, in the beginning of, of the story, unlike a lot of other love stories, is not searching for anything. She's very content and mm -hmm. very logical and not prone to fantasy mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, she meets this vampire who. Um, I mean, there's like a physiological She's attracted to her, huh? Yeah, but it's it's more than that. It's literally like an animalistic need, and it, it re there's nothing else like it, like in the world. Yeah, I mean, I record stuff all the time. I mean, I don't know if I'll necessarily ever release something, but if if there's something which I think is so great that like that I want other people to hear it, then maybe. I think that you're never going to question if Edward and Bella are going to stay together, and that's like. It's never been that way, and I just think, I mean, that, like, for me, that it feels, that feels like the point that needs to, like, really slam people. The first day of set, we had to shoot the big fight at the end. No way! Yeah, and so that was the most stressful thing, because, I mean, I had to set up doing the whole pretty thing, because he's supposed to be pretty the whole time, like, super strength, brooding, like, <laughs> tortured soul, everything, in on a wire rig, like, killing someone. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I mean, that, that was tough, doing that fight scene first. I want to obviously have, have the baby, and, um, and Edward's just terrified of it and, and thinks that it's going to destroy her and thinks that she's ridiculous for thinking that she's strong enough to, to have a vampire baby because he thinks it's just, like, you know, Satan's spawn because that's how he feels about himself. He you know there are so many other factors, like there's so many different departments of the studio who are looking at what you're doing and have a significant say in what you're doing, like the publicity department has a say in what you're doing in a scene and it's like, mm. excuse me? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like you're just like, and it only happens after you've done three of them where you think you would get more power as an right. actor, but you get less and less and less. <laughs> <laughs> like, but like when you kind of start doing, um, you know, when you, there's going to be no sequels and it's like, right. you know, it's a, uh, and you, just get people who are the best at their jobs and you tell them like I want you to do your best work in, in a creative way. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's quite, it's a nice feeling.